In this chapter we're going to model the roof tiles from our template. So to do the roof tiles um, I want to pull off from our, uh, where is it, the uh, template, there we go, the roof construct template because I want the uh, slopey bits. So let's pop a, a null in and I'm going to grab the uh, roof construct out here. We'll plug that into the null. <coughs> and we'll call this uh, roof tiles. Let's have a look at that. So we've just got um, basically this box and it's these top faces that I want to construct. And again, like we did before, I'm going to create an array of points uh, to represent where I want each tile to go. And I'm going to create a tile model and then I'm going to use the copy node to um, copy those tiles to all the points. <coughs> so again, because this topology is not going to change, I can quite happily manually select faces to delete. And I actually want to delete the... Um, these top faces 0 and 1. Well, I actually want to keep 0 and 1. So um, let's add a blast node. And um, I'm going to just connect up the blast node. Let's tap P to get the control up. And I'm going to click on the little arrow so I can select both those top faces and hit enter. And then we'll select delete non selected to keep those two um, upper faces that we want there. Now, um, the other thing I want to do is to, um, if we have a look at them, they're single pieces. I want to actually split them into two separate faces. I want to treat both halves um, separately. And if we turn on point numbers, you'll see that uh, these points are shared at the minute. So to do that, we can uh, use a few nodes, but I'm going to use the facet node. In the facet node, we can say uh, unique points. And if you notice, suddenly we lose the shading. And look, there's double points here. And uh, if we turn on the primitives, you'll see this, uh, well, there's still two primitives, there always was. Um, but but they're, they're separated along here, we've got two edges, um, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, now, what I want, another thing I want to do is I want my tiles to be orientated correctly on the points. And I need to not only create the normal uh, attribute to tell it which direction to face, but also uh, we're going to need to create what's called an up vector as well in order to get them to orientate correctly on this angled surface. So let's create those. First of all, I'm going to just create a, a normal node. Let's calculate some normals. Uh, and we'll turn those into point normals. Now if I just turn those on, what we'll do is we'll see that they face perpendicular to each of the uh, surfaces there. So um, this will be our up vector. This will tell us which way our uh, tile will be upwards. And um, we're going to create another vector that will face along the faces here, and that will tell us the uh, direction vector that, um, that we want to uh, model, model for the uh, roof tile. Um, actually, it will go uh, downwards, I think. It will face downwards. So let's have a, a little... Um, look at that. So at the moment this has created um, N for us. Let's create a tile and just see how it copies first of all. So um, and then we'll create the up vectors to uh, fix the problem so we can see exactly what's going on. So I'll just leave uh, the normal normal at the moment and we'll see how that works out. So what I want to do is um, I want to create an array of points along this surface and um, I think the, uh, the way I'm going to do it actually is I'm going to create an assemble node and this will create a unique name attribute for um, each of these faces uh, and um, the reason I need the name attribute is because the next node needs it to work if we do hit tab and type centroid we can use an extract centroid node now what this will do it will create a point let me just template at the center of each of the uh, faces for us and uh, normally it inherits the attributes now at the moment you'll see there's no n come through, but here we've got n as a point attribute. Now here on the um, extract centroid, we can there we go. We can uh, choose to transfer the attributes. If we click on the little arrow here, you'll see it's looking at primitive attributes name. If we have a look, our name is in the primitive, but our n is a point, so it's not going to work for us. In order to inherit or to see it here in the drop down, we need to promote this normal attribute from a point attribute to a primitive attribute. And that's easily done. We can do that with an attribute promote node. Here we go. Let's pop that in. 
And on the attribute promote, we can click on here and choose normal. We want to promote it from a point to a primitive. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take the uh, maximum. And then in transfer attributes here, we'll choose N. And look, you'll see it comes through. Um, you can actually leave that on the default. That'll be fine. So just uh, select N as the uh, name here and promote it to primitive. And it is actually deleting the original here. So if you look, we no longer have it on the points, we just have it on the normals. And look, it's come through to the uh, centroid here, which is important because we're going to need that to orientate our copies in a minute. Now, um, the next thing I want to do is to uh, create a grid. So I'm going to hit tab and type grid. And um, let's just template the grid for a minute. So this grid, I'm going to basically copy it to each of these planes and then I can arrange the grid in rows and columns to decide how the tiles get laid out. So um, on the grid now, let's um, just do a copy to points. So we'll plug in our grid and the centroid and we'll see how two grids are orientated. They've copied to the points but they're orientated quite crazily. Um, let's turn off delete original. See that doesn't have an effect. but um, that's because we need these two um, vectors, like I said, to get this to work. So let's go back to our um, attribute promote here, or the one before the attribute promote, the normal node, and let's turn on normals. And you can see these are sticking outwards. So um, I want to actually rename this to up, use it as an up vector, because this will tell us which way our, um, tile, our um, grid faces upwards. If you look at the grid here, this would be up, so I want this to sort of be per, per, um, this this up direction to basically oh, let's go to there to be um, in parallel, you know, and um, going in the same direction as the normal. So it's so the face will be orientated that way. And then we need to create another vector to tell it which way to spin around that normal and to face in. So we'll create that second vector. Let's rename this first one though. At the moment here, I'm promoting it to. Um, a primitive attribute called n. What I want to do is actually change its name and let's call this up. Okay. Now in the centroid here we want to click on the drop down and also transfer up as well. Leave n there because we're about to make n the, another normal one. So to calculate the normal one I'm going to use the uh, measure sop again actually. And in the measure sop, um, let's turn that on. What we can do is we can actually, oh, where are we? We can actually measure the uh, gradient. So the gradient is the direction of which values increase. And we're looking at the position. So um, it should go up and down from low values to high. So it should go up the thing, up the uh, point upwards. Now at the moment, you can see it's called gradient. And that's because it's naming it down here as gradient. Let's actually change that. Let's call that N. And uh, just so we can preview that, we won't be able to see that in the display here at the minute. I'll well, just do another quick attribute promote. You don't necessarily um, need to do this. I'm only doing it so I can display it. So here I'm actually going to set this to primitive, display my, um, let me just deselect the node. Let me select my, um, what we're calling it, the gradient N. And uh, there we go, it's promoted it to points. And you can see that it's moving up and down in this direction. So we have one normal vector that's going up perpendicular to the face and one that's going parallel to the face. And this will tell it to uh, our little squares to orientate in this direction and to f orientate their other axis in the other direction, their y axis in the other direction. If we look at our copy to points now, we'll see that our grids actually now align to our template, which is what we wanted to do. So if I just template those and template the grids, you'll see they match exactly. Let me just get rid of that node. So we just wanted to create our two vectors, one that's perpendicular to the face and one that was going in the direction to the uh, Z axis. So if we look at our um, grid here, let's play it face forwards, this start, um, down the bottom of the screen here is forwards. If I change the uh, X size, you'll see that's orientated to the uh, 
there we go, that's orientated to the direction of our normals. If you remember, our normals are going up and down here, so that's the equivalent to facing along the z-axis. So the x changes sort of the width there, and the y will do the uh, height thing. So how do we know what sizes these should be? Well, if we look at our template, let's get rid of this template. If we look at our template here, we can see that our grids need to be as wide as the bounding box here in the in the uh, z-axis is the bounding box z-axis. So um, we can use do that using that b box or the bounding box expression we used before. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to select the grid node, and um, we're going to match the bounding boxes not just in this axis in the z here, but also in this axis. They want to be half this axis. Remember, it's roughly about half the uh, width there. It's slightly more because it's uh, on a slope, but you know that that will do for us. So um, we want to link it to the bounding boxes. So again, I'm going to use that spare parameter so I don't have to type long paths. So I'm going to go to the gear icon on the grid node, and we're going to choose a spare input. And then we can drag the roof tiles here because that's got the bounding box information of the template we want. So on the grid here, if I look at um, this axis, the X, that's the bounding box. Uh, along the Z. So that's the bounding box on the X size. So we'll do B box and then we can type minus one and then we can go D underscore oh, X size. Oh, need an underscore there. And there we go. X size, there we go. So if we look, we're now matching it in this dimension. It's got the same width. And then we can pretty much copy this expression with Control C, and then the other number just paste it in Control V. We'll change that to Z size, and then we need to multiply this by a half. There we go, and you see it's um, just fitting. Okay. So what we should do now, now that we have these laid out, we should make our tile model so we should see if it um, fits nicely. So for that I'm just going to again make a box. We'll start with a box. Let's just uh, select the box. Let's call this box tile model. And um, what I want to do is I want to work out first of all how wide it should be. Because um, I want it to be quite small. So um, in order to work out the, uh, in fact, let's put a small width in first of all. Let's put some, try something like 0.5. Uh, let's try 0.02 and uh, 0.3. Something of that proportions. There we go. Wide and thick. There we go. We'll talk about automating that in a minute. Now you'll notice that um, the z-axis is this way. So the long edge is facing down the Z. Remember, our gradient normals are going up and down the slope that way. And that's where the normals, the N attribute was saying. And that's the forward direction, the direction of the Z axis when on your original model. OK, and we're going to copy it from the center here because um, that's where he's aligned to the to the world origin. So where the origin is, is where it's going to copy to the the actual point. So we've got our tile in there. Um, let's just add a little poly bevel just to give us um, some control over the edge quality. Let's just uh, zoom in a little and then just adjust the edge quality here. There we go. Let's give it uh, two divisions again. Why not? There we go. So we've got a little nice soft tile there. And then I'm going to use my copy to points again and this time copy that to the grids. So if we just have a look now, we'll see that um, the orientated a bit funny. They're orientated funny because actually on the copy to points, if we open up the uh, parameter pane here, you'll see um, it's transferring attributes over, and here's the list of them, but it's telling it, look, not to use N or up. What I'm going to do is just delete the little hat um, between those. No, that's not... Is it on that copy that we're not getting them? Yep, yeah, sorry, wrong copy. Let's undo that. It's on this copy here where we're transferring these attributes over. Look, we don't get N or up here. 
So it, it says little n and up here. What you can do is just delete them all up to that um, that uh, comma. You'll notice a star here. That means it's going to transfer in the n and up for us anyway. If we do that, we'll have a look that we get our n and up attributes. If we click down again, now they're being respected and they're lining up our tiles for us. So we created the attributes up here and we had to tell the copy to points to um, transfer them through. So we just remove them from this list. The little hat means not, don't transfer that. So the syntax here, the star means transfer everything except for this one, except for this one, except for this one. That's why when we removed them from the list, um, they became part of the everything. So they got passed down and you can check the attributes here. Look, N and up came through and here we turned it off on this node so they're not getting carried through this time. And now we can see them there, but um, the slight issue is we need to go back to our model here. We need to change the size here so that, um, that it can fit. Um, we can also change the uh, length there if we want, but um, we'll adjust that in a minute. But I'm more important, uh, more interested in this size here. So there we can just adjust that to fit um, accordingly. Now we could leave it like that, I suppose. Um, so if we change the length of the roof, we'd have to come back here and change the um, length of the tile and that kind of thing. Or you know, if we change the uh, where is it the uh, columns here, that should make smaller tiles. So it'd be nice to link that together so we can affect the uh, resolution of the tiles at the side here. So we can do that. If I select the uh, box here, if you think about it, we know the uh, size in X of the uh, grid here. And uh, we know the number, if we go to the grid here, we know the size in X. And we know the number of columns is across the X axis. So if I've got, um, want to divide this number by this number, that should tell me how um, roughly the size that I need. Now this is an integer, not a float, so it's not going to be totally accurate. So we can, we'll have to fix that in a minute. So let's take the size here in X. Let's um, copy this parameter. And then in the size of the uh, tile model, let's paste relative reference. Let's get rid of any spurious numbers up here. And then we want to divide um, this size, because that's the size of the grid, by the number of uh, sections in it, which will tell us um, the distance that we'll need. So if we go to the grid, that's this columns here. Let's copy that parameter. And then in the tile here, let's go divided by and let's paste a relative reference. And there we go. So if we go to the grid and we change the number of columns, you'll see it shrinks the uh, tile down because we're dividing the distance by size. It shrinks the tiles down to fit so we can kind of get the proportion we like through this. But you'll notice um, it's not quite closing up properly. That's easy to fix. We can just put a little um, fixer in here. So if we look at the uh, expression here, you'll see it's quite long. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little slider, a little multiplier, so I can adjust this. Um, I'll just show you what I mean. If I just multiply this by 1.1, you'll see they get slightly bigger. But it'd be nice for the user to be able to control that. So we'll build a slider in the interface and use our chat expression to link them. It's very easy to do. You can click on the uh, gear icon here and choose Edit Parameter Interface. Now we want a floating point number, a decimal point number. And we can find that on the left here. There it is, float. You can click the arrow to drag it over. And we can give it a name. Let's call this um, X scale. Oh, X scale. So the top number, the name, or sorry, the top label here, the name is what you type in your chat expression. And this is for the human to read on the uh, interface itself. That's all we need to do. We can just hit apply and shut this window down. And look, we have our slider. Now to link it, well we already know how to do this, we can right click and copy parameter and then up here, instead of that number, just select that number, we can right click and paste relative reference. And now you can use this slider and adjust your tiles to make them close up if you want. So we've got a little manual adjustment there, it's probably a way to make that procedural a bit more procedural but that will do. We can always fix it and have gaps between the tiles if we want them to. Cool. Now what about the, um, the overlap on the side here? Well I'm actually going to fix that in a slightly different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a transform node after my bevel. And uh, if you remember this was down at the origin here. Now if I can grab this tile 
you can see I can move it in the x-axis which tilts it along its long edge. So if we look at the copies while we'll do that, I'll just select this transform node and tilt it along the X. You'll see we can actually tilt them upwards. Let's look at the uh, front view. Now that tiles all the way down there, but that's fine. Oh, and I can't reach X, so I'll have to do it in the ladder. And look, we can rotate them to get the angle that we want, so we can get that nice overlap like this. Now you'll notice um, the other side has tilted around the wrong way. Okay, so we've rotated one correctly, but the other one incorrectly. We need to give that the minus rotation. So again, we can use that trick of detecting the normals and switch between them. You'll also notice there's um, they're overlapping at the top. I don't want that. I want a nice gap at the top here. Now, if we go to the grid here and adjust the center in Y, you'll see we can lift that up, and um, it actually separates them or brings them closer together and we can use that to kind of adjust um, the gap here. Let's move that up so that, that it's a bigger gap. Now what I want to do is actually bring it back to the original position. So how I can do that um, actually is add a transform node after the copy. And what I'm going to do is use this to negate this move so it will stay in the same position but just separate them which is what we want. So I'm going to select this channel here and copy parameter the center Y and on the transform here in the translate I'm going to paste relative reference but I'm going to type a minus in front of it to multiply it by minus one which will keep it in the same position look the effect of that is if I now move the center Y it just moves them further and closer apart so if we suddenly get tiles that intersect we can just easily separate them out I'm going to build a separate model across the top here some ridge tiles to fill the gap so we will never see the gap we just need to be able to fix it and that's a, a sort of a nice fix. We can move those in and out there. The other fix I need to do actually is have these tiles rotated correctly. So we're going to use our old friend the uh, for loop to do that. We're going to um, loop through each point here. If you um, look at the points here, we have them. And um, we're, we're displaying the up and the end there. So we can see the end here. Now what I'm interested in is uh, is the normal attribute because um, actually is the up attribute. Let me t add a visualizer. Let me turn on a visualize here. Let me turn this off. Let's just uh, turn on the visualizer. These are quite good because we can view different attributes. Let's type in up here. And we don't want to see it as a color. We want to see this as a marker. And we can change the marker not just from letters but actually we can change this from text to a vector trail. Um, if you do it point trail, it will face the uh, other direction. Ooh, point trail. Actually, let's do a vector trail. Uh, sorry, just a vector. It'll point the other way. There we go. And we can see our up vector is rotating outwards. Now, again, if we look at it in this axis, we can see this side is negative x and this side is positive x. So, again, if we do our test, if it's less than zero and greater than zero, the x, we know if we're dealing with this one or that one. So, at the moment, the rotations here this transform, this rotation, was dealing with the left one. So that's where the x was uh, less than zero. So we want to do our switch when the x is greater than zero and then do the reverse transform on the other side, the same as we um, did before with the windows. So um, let's build that. So we just need to type um, for each and um, here we can do it for each um, Uh, which one can we do it for? Oh yeah, it's for each point, isn't it? Yeah, so I was getting confused there for a minute. So we don't want to do it for each point because we're looping through each point on this side of the copy. So we can just drag that on there and this uh, down to the left input and turn that on. So now we're looping through each point on the grids and uh, we're rotating them. So we want to put our little switch in. So let's drag a little switch. And uh, we want another transform node to have the reverse transform of this. So on this guy, let's put minus 5 in. Because I copied it, it's the same value. We'll put a little um, chat expression in in a moment. So let's just connect that to the switch. Now remember, if we want to uh, compile this, we want to do it properly. Um, so we need to tie up loose ends. So this guy here, we can just make a copy and then we can change this to fetch input, if you remember. And we can put this over one transform. We can just make a copy of that 
put it over the other transform just to encapsulate those in the brown bubble nicely. Now on the switch node, um, in fact we don't need our transform nodes in there, we can pop those outside. Doesn't really matter. I just want the switch node inside here. Let's just make that a little neater. Cool. So um, yeah, we've got the uh, switch node inside there. So on the switch node, we want to type our little expression up here, which um, detects um, whether or not the normal is larger. The uh, sorry, the up vector. Remember, it's the up. We uh, where are, oh, got that there. So it's this guy here, the up vector that we want to visualize. We want to see if this is facing in the positive x or negative x. So on the switch. Um, again, if we want to compile it or just good practice, I like to go to the gear icon and choose add a spare input. That way I can drag in the node I want to read. Now the one with the attribute on it, if I middle click here, is this node on the right. This has the up. These guys don't have the up attribute. So it's this for each I need to drag in there. So let's drag that in. And then I can use the point expression, point, because we're reading the points that are coming in. That's where the up attribute is. And then remember, we can use minus one to refer to that path. And then um, we want to do uh, point zero because it's always going to be point zero in the loop because we look look at them one at a time. And then a bracket and type up for the attribute. And then a zero for the um, uh, index. There's only uh, one index. And then we've got to say when this is all larger than zero, are you going to switch? So when it's larger than zero, let's look at the uh, bottom four each. Now, if we look in the front view, we can see now that the rotations are working correctly. This is orientated correctly, so is that one. And if I select this second transform, that affects just the uh, right-hand side. And the other transform just affects the left-hand side. Because then the inputs here are getting switched through the switch, depending on which way the normal, or the up vector in this case, faces. And then we're seeing the result down here. Now what I'm going to do, one last little thing, is this transform, I'm going to select this rotation and copy parameter, and then in this second transform, I'm going to paste the relative reference, and then uh, let's make sure there's no numbers in there, and we're just going to put a minus again in front of it, so it's always going to be the, in, the inverse of this one. So I'd only need to rotate one now, and you'll see the other side mirrors what it does. So we can adjust our tiles to make sure that um, they're not intersecting with each other and they look kind of nice there we go a bit of a gap we want because we want to simulate this and then we can go to the grid actually and just pull that down a bit more to make that gap at the top a bit bigger as well and there we go we can see it fits our house and if we change the uh, proportion of the house then the uh, roof will change with it because of the way we've built everything so uh, let me just move all these um, over to the side a little so uh, make a bit more space there we go so um, we want to uh, fix this at the end so what I'm going to do is uh, create a UV unwrap fix it I meant just to uh, finish it off so again we can do a quick shade just to check the UVs look okay so if we look at that that looks um, fine So again, on the uh, unwrap here, you can drop down the uh, spacing to make those closer together. And you can check out the UVs if you want the tiles like that. Or again, you could pop it in here and UV each tile one at a time. And then they're all going to have the same UV on there. It um, all depends what scheme you want to use. Let's do it afterwards. You know, it re really doesn't matter. Well, it depends what you want to do, as always. I'll leave it like that. So let's check out attributes. Um, we want to get rid of that name attribute, so we'll do an attribute delete. Um, we don't need the quick shade, keep things tidy. So in the attribute delete, I'm just going to delete the name here in the point, and uh, we want to keep the rest, we want to keep the UVs, stuff like that. Um, let's just recalculate the normals, just to make sure we've got some nice normals for shading and the rest of the pipeline. And then uh, I want to create my assemble node to create a new name attribute. This one's a primitive attribute though, that's important. And we'll call this uh, roof tiles, just like we did before. Then we'll create our group node. And again, we'll call this roof 
tiles and then we'll create a null at the end we'll call this roof tiles out there we go and then we'll create a, uh, a network box around everything again there we go that one let's rename that to roof tiles and then we can give that um, I think an appropriate dark red color there we go. let's pop these over here and then again we can grab our null bring that all the way down to our merge here and then we can see the result of that in there that didn't connect did it let's uh, try that again run that down let's get closer this time there we go so you can see our roof tiles on top of our um, roof there we've got a little gap to do the ridge tiles which is fine it's got that nice kind of look Excellent. Right, let's um, now have a look at the uh, ridge tiles, the tiles that go across the top here. So, as always, um, I'm going to base my ridge tiles off the actual um, the uh, roof tile geometry here. So, I'm going to hit tab and make a null. And um, where do we want to come off? Yeah, let's come off the... Uh, last here where we just have these top faces let's call this uh, um, what should we call it roof um, underscore ridge tiles because they're the ridge tiles that go across the top there let's do uh, that as an underscore cool now what I want to do is I just want to keep this central line so again, I'm going to do that procedural group thing with the bounds. So let's uh, let's do a, a group. Let's call these uh, groups center points. And let's set this to points because uh, you can only use the bounding box method with points or vertices. Let's turn off the base group and turn on bounding region. And let's set this to bounding object. It's going to give us an error because we don't have one. So let's make a bounds node a bound node and let's just plug that in directly like this and anything inside this bound is going to get selected for us so we can adjust the uh, lower and the upper padding in the X here now in the Z we want to increase both of those so it's guaranteed to get that now as we resize this this box will resize around the bits we want and uh, we need to let's put in the same number on both of those there we go and we need to lift it up in Y the box so we can bring that up a bit there and lift this above and there we go now we've guaranteed to select those central points and as we change the uh, roofs proportion um, because that's a bounding box based upon it that's always going to resize with it and select those points for us so we always know that we've got these uh, center points selected cool so uh, the next thing to do is to uh, delete the rest of the geometry except for those points. We want to keep those. So with a blast node we can again choose the uh, center points and delete non-selected. We have those. Just those two points. And then as you've seen before I'm going to use my favorite add node which will join those together and create a line again for us. Let me turn off the templates. So you go to the polygon tab, turn on by group and there we go because you don't specify a group it connects all the points for you automatically um, now um, we might want to uh, adjust this make it bigger and smaller so I'm just going to add a transform node so we can change the scale of it in relation to our roof let me just pop in the template for the roof tiles so what I mean by that is we might want to scale it in the Z here longer or shorter so we can adjust maybe the overlap of the roof tiles so that's what that transform there is for. So I'm now going to add my uh, resample node. So I can control how many points we're going to have along there. Let's turn off maximums, maximum segment length and use maximum segments. And here in the resample we can choose how many um, of these tiles. And like we did before with the um, planks as well, I'm going to connect the width of the tile to this so we can adjust how many um, go along there so let's create our little tile model quickly um, I'm gonna make this quite simply out of a tube so hit tab and type tube 
let's have a look at our little tube here so I want to change this to a polygon type and I want it to go along the Z axis remember how it's going to copy with the Z facing we'll create normals facing um, in that direction now um, we've got our little um, cap here let's change the uh, radius let's make it sort of a tenth 0.1 by 0.1 let's zoom in a little maybe slightly bigger that'll do and uh, let's give it um, 20 columns so we've got a nice sort of rounded shape there now what I want to do actually is um, delete half of it so I'm gonna uh, use my group and bounds trick again just for fun so um, I could actually uh, group it by an expression because half is above the y height but we'll just do a group by bounds let's call this um, uh, keep me we've used that name before so I'm going to add a bounds node a bound node rather let's just plug that in now in my bound node what I want to do is um, let's just template that for a minute you can see it grayed out here so I just want to increase all the bounds by 0.1 so they're all slightly bigger and definitely encapsulate it and then what I want to do is the lower padding here I want to bring up to halfway so how do I know what halfway is well actually this is the uh, radius of the tube so what I'm going to do is grab the uh, radius um, here this one we can it's the same radius in both so that's fine we can grab this one so we'll copy parameter and in the bounds here um, actually it's a minus version of that let's go paste relative reference let's get rid of all the uh, rest of these numbers and then we'll type a minus in front of it there we go so here we've got the radius but minus and uh, that's brought our padding up half the height because you know that was half the uh, original radius of the original bounding box so if you look at our group um, we need to uh, oh, set by bounding region so I must have turned that off and set this to uh, points there we go and we've got to set this to bounding object so it's using that bounding and there we go we can see it's selected the top half ones for us which is good so now what I want to do is um, actually blast off that bottom half so let's create a blast node and we'll select the uh, keep me group and hit delete non-selected so we just have those at the top there so we've got enough divisions in this guy now actually let's put 28 divisions so we get a bit more creeping down the side there so on the tube I've increased my columns here to 28 so it comes a bit more down the side looks a bit more formed um, I'm then going to do a poly extrude to give it some thickness so here we can just give it a, a little bit of a distance outwards from there don't forget to turn on output back so you've got the uh, in a bit if that's what you want so let's maybe make this uh, 0.03 something like this and again we can add a poly bevel just to give it some nice edge quality so let's put a, re a small number, a smallish number, something like that in there. Wants to be a little harder because it's a uh, terracotta, isn't it? It's made of a material like that. So um, we've got our little uh, roof tile here, and what I want to do is remember we copy it from the point, at the uh, center, but also from the base, and it's slightly above the ground here. So I'd like to stick it on the. Uh, ground plane the zero in y so again we put the transform in here and I'm going to do um, minus dollar y min which will just pop it down there now I can also scale it here to make it slightly flatter if I want I'm just going to flatten it slightly just to give it a slightly better shape there we go now we can do our copy to points and see how that copies across to the uh, ridge t ridges here there we go let's see that in relation to our roof tiles themselves so we can see it's a bit long 
Um, I did add a transform node for that curve, that was here, so that we can scale that back a bit, get control of that to make that fit, or to get the length that we want. Because remember, we need to extend by, we're getting an extra um, half a guy because we're copying to the center of each point. So the, the uh, original line now, if we have a look, is only that far in. We can consider how much of the uh, tile to put in. And then we need to know how why to make this tile. And now we can control the tile with this height here. Make it bigger and smaller. So um, what we can do is we can actually drive that height from, um, well, if we knew the length of the original line and uh, we knew how many segments were in it, we'd know how many tiles we, want, we wanted along it, like we did with the, um, exactly as we did with the planks along the uh, door there. And uh, we can do that. We can create our um, measure node. We don't need to cut this up this time um, because we know how many times we're cutting it up here with the number of segments. So we just need to know the original length and then divide it by the number of segments to know how wide each segment should be and therefore each one of these guys is. So let's use our measure node. And uh, let's pop the measure in here before the resample. And we'll set this to, again, perimeter. So it's measure. if I look, right click and choose spreadsheet, I can see the perimeter of that one. Remember, there's only one curve. Here it is. And then we want to divide that by the number of uh, segments here. So how can I do that? Well, on this guy, um, we can use, we saw a point expression to read a point. We've seen the prim expression. So we'll use the prim expression to read a primitive attribute. And again, I'm going to use the um, spare input so I don't have to type the, the path in the code. I just like doing it this way. So on the tube, make a spare input. Drag your measure node in there because it's the measure node that has the uh, perimeter attribute here. And then in the height, you can type uh, prim, so it'll read the primitive attribute, and then a minus one. And then um, we can type in a uh, zero because uh, we just want the first primitive. They're all going to be the same. There is only one curve at the minute. And then we want the attribute perimeter. And then the index zero, there is only one there. So we'll run that in, and you'll see it's bringing in, if you've done it correctly, the perimeter attribute here. We can see that um, as the code. And then what we want to do is divide it by the number of segments, and we can use the chert expression for that. So we can select the resample here, select the uh, number 9, and do right-click copy parameter. And on the tube, we can do divide, and then right-click, oh, sorry, divide, that's minus, divide. And then we can do right click, it's not coming in. Right click, paste relative reference, know that. Put my cursor there first. Right click, paste relative reference, there we go. Phew, that did that. And look, that's separated them out. And then we can use the uh, transform node to actually stretch out that curve and get it to fit. There we go, that looks a bit better. Let's set that back to one again. So now that's automatically taken care of. If you want more um, tiles, you can go to segments here and you can change the number of segments and then you can rescale the curve to fit again. So I'm going to leave it at uh, 9 there because it lines up quite nicely. Now if we look in the uh, front view, we'll see it's slightly out of alignment. So we'll just add a transform node down at the uh, bottom here. And then in the pivot transform, I'm just going to put um, $CEY so that in this axis, when I hit enter, the pivot is um, near where these guys are. So I can just place them nicely there. So remember, we can go to our uh, original um, grid here for the roof tiles and move that up and down to separate those further or closer together if, if you want to adjust it. And remember, on the original tile, actually, you can make it longer or shorter as well to get more of an overlap depending on what you want to do. So there we go, we've just uh, finished the uh, ridge tiles here. Let's um, again, like we've done before, is tidy up and create the right attributes. So here I've got a bunch of point groups that I don't need. So I'll add a group delete node. 
Let's plug that in. So up here, this time I'm just going to put a star. Star means everything. So look, if I now click, it's got rid of them all. Saves me having to click multiple times. So I've deleted all groups in this part of the network. Uh, and then again, we want a UV unwrap. You can either um, do it on all the bits at the end here or do it on the individual one before the copy here, just on the first one. So again, a quick shade just to double check that's working. Yep, we've got nice UVs. So again, I could put this up here and we get the same UV on each one, or I could put it down here and each one gets a different UV. It's entirely up to you how you want to um, UV that up. Then we'll create, uh, we don't need that anymore. We can create our assemble node. If you remember, and we're going to call this uh, roof ridge tiles. And what do you call that? There we go. And then uh, we're going to make our group. And again, call that roof ridge tiles. And then we'll make our null. Call that roof ridge tiles out. And then again, we'll create our net box around everything. Call that roof ridge tiles and let's give that a funky color let's have it slightly darker there we go not so much a color and then let's plug that null finally into our merge and then we can check out our procedural glory oh I'm getting an error yep that reminded me let's just recalculate the normals on these guys let's do that um, anyway we'll be fine just to make sure it's all neat if we come down here We'll see if we have our procedural house now. If I look at my UVs, it's all UV'd and ready to go. Oh, and there we go. So you can see we've got uh, quite an impressive network and we've got various controls. We can change the uh, noise on the bricks, the shape of the windows, the uh, depth of the frames, um, the width of the glass, um, how many planks in there, in the door. We can change the tile models. We can swap the tile models out. Um, we can uh, do lots of stuff, change the templates that are cutting the windows and therefore the window shape. A lot of interesting things. So um, that's it for this um, first section. In the uh, next section we'll talk about how we can pre-fracture this and get this ready for the simulation.